Hello everyone and welcome to the Morningstar how-to training video series. In this presentation we're going to review how to custom program the lighting control functionality of your controller from the onboard meter. Many of Morningstar's newer controllers such as the ProStar MPPT and ProStar PWM Generation 3 have lighting control that can be custom programmed. Custom programming can be done from the onboard display if you have a metered version of the controller. The firmware for the controller should be updated to the most recent version available. To update the firmware requires the controller to be connected to a Windows PC via either a UMC1 or MSC1 adapter. We're not going to review this functionality in this video, however uh, there's many online resources that can assist you with this. If you already have an adapter in a PC, it may be easier to program the lighting from the MSView program. We will not be going over that functionality in this video, however again there are other resources available that can assist you with doing this programming from MSView. Before you start trying to program your controller, you should review the meter map for your particular controller. Meter maps are available on the support website at www.support.morningstarcorp.com. Also before attempting to program, it is recommended to plan out your lighting timers on paper so that you can follow the plan when programming the controller. This slide shows a meter map. You will need to navigate to the custom programming section to access the lighting control program. In order to access the custom section, you will need to have switches 4, 5, and 6 set to the on position on your charge controller. Also of note, if you want to have the lighting turn on from dusk to dawn, then you don't need to custom program the controller. This can be accomplished by setting switch number 1 to the on position. That will enable lighting for dusk to dawn. Okay, so let's take a closer look at the lighting variables that are available for programming. LVD and LVDR are the settings for the battery voltage value you would want to set to turn the load off or then turn the load back on again when the ba battery began to recharge. Timers are used for setting when to turn the lights on and off and for how long. Sunrise is the setting for what percentage of array voltage triggers the sunrise flag. Sunset is the setting for what percentage of array voltage triggers the sunset flag. Sunrise and sunset typically do not need to be adjusted unless there is an issue with ambient lighting or very low solar resource on the solar panels in your particular application. The summary gives a very basic visual of how the lighting is set. And finally, save config is critical and is used to save the programming that you have set up. So now let's take a deeper dive into the timers. There are four channels and each channel has two timers. Basically one timer to tell it when to turn on and the second to tell it when to turn off. Each timer has an event and an action. The event is the trigger, i.e. sunset, and the action is what you want to happen, i.e. turn the lights on. The event options, as you can see listed, are before and after sunrise, before and after midday, before and after sunset, and before and after midnight. It's important to note and understand that this is based on a solar day and not on an actual real-time clock. Your action items are to turn on, turn off, or do nothing. You will also note the combine functions. These are Boolean logic functions used to combine the timers. It is important that these are used. Basically the function is OR, meaning one event or the other triggers their perspective event, AND, meaning this event and that event must occur together for the event to trigger. Generally speaking, the OR function is the most commonly used. The combinations of logic available allow you to get very creative with what you want to make happen. You just have to plan it all out and think it through before programming. So now let's take a look at an example program. Again, it's easiest if you plan your timers before trying to program the charge controller. This way you can have an understanding of what channels, events, and actions you will need to use to accomplish your programming. If you have this written down, it's much easier to follow along when you're programming via the onboard screens on the meter. Without it, it's easy to lose track of your place and, and lose track of what you've already programmed. Okay, so in our example, 
we're going to have the lights come on in the morning prior to sunrise and then turn off again shortly after sunrise. Uh, this is a pretty common application. Uh, what this does is the lights will be on in the morning when you're getting up out of bed and getting going. And then when the sun comes up, you don't need the lights on anymore. It turns them off. Um, then in the evening, we're going to have the lights turn back on just before sunset. And we're going to have them remain on several hours after sunset and into the evening. Um, note it's important that you should do a load analysis to ensure that you have a properly sized system to run the lights and the loads for the amount of time you program into the controller. Otherwise, you'll just be discharging the battery and eventually go into an LVD situation. Okay, so in this slide, we're uh, taking a look at the channels and the timers for the particular events we want to have happen. So for uh, turning the lights on in the morning, we're going to use channel one, timer one. Our event's going to be before sunrise and our action is going to be turn the lights on. Then for turning the lights off in the morning, we're going to use channel one, timer two. The event's going to be after sunrise and the action will be lights off. Then when evening comes, when we want to turn the lights back on, we're going to use channel two, timer one. The event will be before sunset and the action will be lights on. And then finally, when we want to turn the lights off in the evening, we're going to use channel two, timer two. The event will be after sunset and the action will be lights off. Now when we get done programming these, we're going to want to combine these timers all as OR functions so they'll operate independently of one another. All right, so uh, next we're going to go ahead and see what this looks like on the actual controller. Okay, so here we are at our charge controller. Uh, currently the charge controller is powered off. We do have it connected to a 12 volt battery. Um, it's all we need connected is battery. We do not need solar or the load connected in order to program it. As you can see, this unit does have the onboard display and the navigational uh, buttons. The uh, first thing we're going to want to do to uh, enable us to be able to access the custom menus from the onboard display is set switches 4, 5, and 6 to the on position, so we'll make sure those are set properly, and then we will power on the charge controller. Uh, while we're waiting for it to come on, uh, just a note, I do have the uh, meter map available so I can look at the meter map to uh, make sure I understand where I'm navigating to. And I also have my uh, lighting control programming uh, document that I created earlier so I can follow along as I do the programming. So if we use the down arrow, we will hit the main menu. We can continue down till we hit custom. Use the right arrow to select custom. We're going to go to load control because that's where the lighting is. And we are going to select lighting. Uh, this takes us to the custom lighting settings. Again, we have LVD, which is your low voltage disconnect uh, value that you could program. Your LVR, which is your low voltage disconnect reconnect value. So once your battery charged back up to a certain value, when it would uh, reconnect. You have your timers, which we're going to go into in a moment. You have your sunrise and your sunset settings, which we reviewed earlier. Generally speaking, you don't need to do anything with those. You also have a summary where you can uh, view a summary of the changes you've made for the lighting and also your save config. So let's go ahead and uh, go to our timers. Um, you select your timers, your four channels come up. So again, for this purpose, we're going to use channels one and two to do our programming for sunrise and also for sunset. So let's begin with channel number one, which we're going to use for programming our sunrise. So channel one, timer one, our event is going to be before sunrise. We're going to have to press and hold the right arrow button to actually edit the timer involved. And it will start flashing to let you know when you can uh, change it. We wanted to set uh, timer one to be one hour before sunrise. So let's go ahead and select one hour. 
and we are going to save that. It will ask you if you want to confirm you're going to save it. You say yes. And our action on that timer is going to be lights on. So we've set timer one to uh, turn the lights on one hour before sunrise. Now we're going to set timer two. And our event is going to be after sunrise. And our time is going to be 30 minutes. So we will set this to be 30 minutes. And save. And our action is to turn the lights off. Now that we have both of these timers set, we'll go back and we want to combine them. And we're going to set them to combine as an OR function, meaning one or the other will trigger the event. So that's it for channel one, timers one and two. So we now have our sunrise uh, lights on and off programmed. Now we're going to go back and select channel two. Channel 2, we're going to use the timers to uh, do our before and after sunset. So timer 1, our event is going to be before sunset. We wanted to turn our lights on one half hour before sunset, so we'll set that. And save. And our action is lights on. Now we will configure timer two. And our event for timer two is after sunset. So we select after sunset. Again, press and hold the right arrow to set the time. We wanted to set this for five hours. So we will go ahead and scroll through and set this for five hours. And we will save our five hours. Our action is lights off. So we'll select that. Again, we want to go back and combine these timers. Again, we're going to combine them as an OR function. And we have them set. I should point out that when you uh, do the combine function, you are combining the channels. So you're combining channel one with channel two in either an or or an and functionality. Uh, it's not necessarily that you're combining the timers on a particular channel. The, the timers on a channel will execute independently. However, uh, the channels have to be told whether to how they're going to combine. So now we can go back to our uh, channel one, two, three, and four. We're done programming 1 and 2, channel 3 and 4 we're not using, so we don't need to do anything there. We'll go back. We want to go down and save our configuration. We set select save config and hit the right arrow for select. And then we confirm it by hitting the right arrow again for yes. And it has saved our programming. At this point you can uh, go up and look at your summary, select your summary, and as you can see, uh, if there were no lighting timers, it would just be a straight flat bar. Uh, but what we can see here is that in the morning, uh, the lights are on in the morning, and then they're on again as evening hits. Um, so this is just a rough estimation of what's going on uh, with the timers, but it is a method to check that your programming took effect. You can now hit the back arrow and go back to your main screens. You'll notice that the controller faulted. Uh, that is because we had a programming change to the lighting and the controller needs to be power cycled for those changes to take effect. So we simply uh, remove battery to power off the unit and then power it back on. We'll go through our boot. Uh, and that's it. We have our custom programming set for our lighting. You can go ahead at this time and connect your load and your solar and uh, you should be set. This concludes our video on setting the lighting timers from the onboard meter and navigational arrows. Thank you for watching. For more information, please visit our website at www.morningstarcorp.com. Thank you.